Cooper Cup blocks it out of the air and gives the Rams the lead. Robert Wood, touchdown, L.A. Ball goes crashing into the end zone. Aaron Donald almost beat the football there. Corey Littleton, have yourself a day. Picked off, Marcus Peters. Coming off the edge, and Ryan will be wrapped up by Clay Matthews. Everett in stride. Wow. Franklin Myers gets his hand down there. Leno got a hand on it. Did he pick it? He did! Racing down the sideline is a key to lead. Gurley for MVP! Touchdown LA! Picked off by John Johnson. Well, it's Dante Fowler who is able to get to breathe. Greg Zerline sends the Rams to the Super Bowl! LA will play for the Lombardi! Welcome back, guys, to, well, we're recording another podcast, and this time we decided to do it live because the Rams decided to just go full-on chaos mode. Uh, What a day. Um, We're recording this 10.30 Eastern time, 7.30 Rams time. Um, I mean, Alexis, I'm just going to give you the floor because, you know, we're going to have so much to talk about. I'm really interested to to get your thoughts and just kind of let you, you know, throw caution the wind there. Yeah, guys. So Jalen Ramsey is a Ram. Um, That is something that people have kind of thrown around throughout the season because it's been kind of uh, obvious that Jalen Ramsey has wanted out of Jacksonville. Uh, So it's been something that a lot of Rams fans have wanted and have advocated for and have thought is going to happen. And then it kind of seemed for a while that it wasn't going to happen and that Jacksonville wasn't going to trade him. And then we find out today that they did. So, you know, that's huge in itself. And obviously there, there's two other new Rams, but let's talk about Jalen Ramsey first, Jake. Um, did you, or did you not like this trade? So I really like this trade. Um, and, and I got to apologize to Jalen Ramsey because for a while, you know, I've been like, how could you do that? How could you be, you know, sitting out? Cause he's clearly sitting out and not helping his team. And you know what? I thought about this. And I don't know if it's because he's a Ram or whatnot uh, or the recency bias, but the Jaguars totally had the best cornerback in the NFL. It doesn't get any better than that. You're not going to draft anyone better than that. And they refused to pay him. Like, they gave Nick Foles all that money, and they couldn't give Ramsey that money. Nick Foles is making exactly what Ramsey is probably going to demand, around that $20 million range. He's the best at his position, and they wouldn't pay him. So I don't have any issue anymore with how Ramsey handled anything. Um, I, I, you know, I don't know why it took me till now to realize that, but uh, I just think they totally dropped the the ball here. This is not Khalil Mack uh, with the Raiders and the Raiders don't pay anybody, but this is not Khalil Mack who is going to be 28, right? This is Ramsey. Who's 24 years old, the same age Cooper cup was when the Rams picked him. I mean, this is legitimately, like, you could make the argument he's a redshirt senior coming out of college, and he's the best cornerback in the NFL. That's what you're getting. You're getting a 24-year-old, and as long as you sign him, and this is an A++++. I mean, there, this is the best move that you can make. There's not a first-rounder in 2020 or 2021 or that fourth-round pick that could be better than Ramsey. Now, could they collectively be better than Ramsey? You know, as far as value, sure. But the Rams, I imagine now they're going to be picking way late, and I think that's what they imagine. So these aren't going to be huge picks. I think maybe Jacksonville packages, you know, a bunch of these picks to, you know, maybe draft Trevor Lawrence, depending on where they are in 2021. Um, but that's looking way ahead. I think the Rams nailed it here, just like I thought they nailed, you know, their last trade with the Jaguars, uh, getting Dante Fowler Jr., yeah, I like this trade. Now, here, let me clarify something. I'm going to like this trade a lot more if we sign Jalen Ramsey to a long-term contract because we did give up two first-rounders for him. So it's going to be a real bummer if he doesn't re-sign with us and then we essentially are out two round picks for nothing, or two first-round picks for nothing, excuse me. So I like this pick. I love Jalen Ramsey. I know a lot of people have an issue with him. Um in a locker room uh, or, you know, his personality, but guess what guys, he's a winner. 
Uh, he, he, you know, maybe I, I know that that's kind of hard to comprehend because he was on the Jaguars, but, but just look at his stats. He is the best corner in football. And he did all of that on a not so great Jacksonville team. I think it's a great trade. I think it's just what we need. Obviously, I know, you know, Marcus Peters, a lot of people are sad to lose him, but guys, Jalen Ramsey is better. Um, you know, that's all that there is to it. Uh, I'm sad to see Peters go. Um, I mean, he was with us, obviously, for a significant part of Rams history. But it's time to embrace Jalen Ramsey. I hope he comes here. I hope he balls out. And I'm really excited to see him play, hopefully on Sunday against the Falcons, because that's what they think is going to happen. I completely agree. Um, you know, I, I think it, it's sad. Uh, it, it is really sad to see Peters go. I'm a big fan of Peters, and I'm a big fan of the fact that, you know, he was trashed from his time, you know, leaving the Chiefs, um, and, you know, being sent in that trade, and, you know, the, the flag that he threw into the stands. He was completely trashed. I loved when, I forget who it was on NFL Network, came out and was like, you know what, no, Marcus Peters is somebody, you know, he does a coat drive every single year to help out kids that can't afford winter coats. He is somebody that was very active around the Los Angeles community, uh, charity-wise, and this is somebody that the Rams loved. I mean, I think, it, remember, we had Steve Weish on the show, and he, they said, I mean, and he said right away, he's like, the Rams want to bring Marcus Peters back next year. So clearly something went down where they realized they weren't going to be able to get a deal done or they realized paying Jared Goff was going to have to, you know, force them to make some tough decisions. They realized that Ramsey was, you know, a possibility. And they also realized the fact that, look, you know, when you sign somebody like Jared Goff, you sign that quarterback, the thing that made you flexible, the thing that allowed you to sign this guy and this guy and this guy and make this trade and make, you know, the thing that did that was Goff on his rookie deal. Well, now that you've paid Goff, you have to find cheap, young talent. So by trading Marcus Peters, getting a fifth rounder, taking that salary off the books, and basically not stressing over next year trying to sign him, now you make the, the Ravens better, who were looking for a cornerback desperately, but you also get better at the linebacker position. Kenny Young from UCLA, so a lot of the L.A. faithful will know who he is. This is somebody that plays extremely hard. He's extremely fast. He plays faster than his 40 time, ran a 4 6 flat. Uh, this is somebody that, um, you know, for whatever reason, uh, people are bashing. Uh, you know, they, they don't like this trade. They, they don't like the pickup of him. I think him alongside Littleton is going to be dynamic. I mean, I think you're looking at somebody that, you know, was onto something. That Jacksonville game. He was nasty. I mean, he he had a nasty hit on our Gardner, uh, Gardner Minshew, um, somebody that has been trying to get in the lineup. Uh, you know, obviously they've had guys like C.J. Mosley in the past um, that have kind of you know pushed him down the rungs a little bit. This was his opportunity. The Eagles ended up letting go of uh, L.J. Fort, somebody that I felt was like one of the more underrated uh, free agent acquisitions, and so the Ravens pounced. And this is somebody alongside Josh Bynes that they really liked. And I, I think he really just overtook Kenny Young's spot because he was inactive his last game. And, you know, Young is somebody you're getting athleticism. He could be better in coverage, but you've seen his ability to cover in college. Um, this is somebody that, you know, was considered the poor man's version of, you know, somebody like, um, you know, Baker, uh, you know, coming out of um, – I believe it was Georgia, Jerome Baker, um, you know, guys like that, because he was from the same draft. And so I really like the pickup. I think this guy instantly comes in. He can start, um, you know, nothing against our guy, uh, Troy Reader. I think he's actually done a solid job in relief. I think Bryce Hager's done a solid job. And, of course, you know, Taylor Rapp's still going to be used in that kind of pseudo linebacker role. Um, but I think Kenny Young, people are sleeping on. You get a cheap Fourth round talent, you're going to have him for three years. That's a lot of control. And now, as sad as this sounds, because you can't just guarantee the Rams keep everybody, now you have some flexibility. If you don't believe Littleton is going to be able to be affordable next year, you can now keep Kenny Young. And now you have Micah Kaiser and you have Traven Howard balling out on the special teams unit. And you have other pieces, you know, so it, it, it adds you know, more flexibility. And again, they're going to have to play this cheap game because they paid golf. 
Right. No, definitely. And, uh, you know, I think that you make make some good points. But I think the bottom line is, guys, um, something that, you know, Jake and I have been talking about right now is that, you know, our Rams are three and three in a division that is very competitive. We are in third place and we had to do something drastic. Uh, so we, you know, we made a big trade. This is a blockbuster trade. We gave up a lot to get Jalen Ramsey. I do think it's justified. I do think that we can sign him to a long-term deal. So, you know, as, as far as that goes, I think really all we, you know, we can wait till Sunday. Hopefully he's out there and hopefully he balls out. But, uh, then Jake, I'm going to let you talk a little bit about Austin Corbett, who is the offensive lineman we, uh, traded for from the Browns. You are more familiar with him than I am. Uh, what are your thoughts on him? Yeah, so, you know, Austin Corbett, somebody they get for a late 2021 pick. Um, this brings up an, a really good topic that I wanted to get into uh, because I feel as though, you know, first off, I feel like people are way too quick to be like, well, you know, the 32 NFL teams know what they're doing at all times. They can never make a bad decision. So if the Browns are getting rid of him, since they're one of the 32 teams, they're getting rid of him for a reason. I'm sorry, but this is the 33rd overall pick in the 2018 draft, and you just trashed him. You literally threw him away to the Rams, who desperately need anything. You and I were talking about this. I listed a giant list of free agent offensive linemen. Austin Corbett is a dream scenario. I never expected this. This is better than uh, you know talking about Forrest Lamp. I didn't even know he was available. Um, this is somebody that I saw up close and personal at the Senior Bowl. Uh, this is somebody that plays very well, in my opinion, as an inside offensive lineman. They tried him all over the place at the Senior Bowl. He got blown up at the tackle position. So what? He got exposed. He was a tackle in college against lesser competition, went and, you know in front of all his peers, and we find out, look, this guy's not a tackle. Fine. So he's a guard slash center, so he can play either position. I, I don't get the whole, well, he sucks because he didn't do well with the Cleveland Browns. The Browns are willingly starting Greg Robinson. I mean, they are willingly starting Greg Robinson. They're the same team that paid uh, Kevin Zeitler $11 million per year and then promptly traded him a year later to the Giants. I mean, they traded him for Olivier Vernon. and I, I get, you know, the talent is there, but that, was that really necessary? Like, I mean, I, I don't think it was. I think... You know, what we're learning, especially with the way the Rams are playing, is offensive line is so valuable. And to do that, I mean, I just don't trust what the Cleveland Browns are doing. I think that they have all this talent on paper and they're not doing anything. So what do what can I make? What inferences can I make? Maybe the coaching staff isn't very good. You know, we talk about, oh, well, they're in the NFL and you're not. Oh, well, uh, you know, name, you know, t tell me that you know, NFL coaches and scouts and front office executives are never fired, right? I mean, guys don't always make the right decision. I think this is a horrible decision for the Browns. What are you gaining from this? A 2021 late round pick? The Rams get a guy that was the 33rd overall pick in a draft two years ago. And this is where we're at in the NFL. You, I mean, you and I were talking about this, you know, the XFL. Look at the guys that are available in this draft today for the XFL. Like, seriously. Like, are, are you right. kidding me? There's no development anymore. There, you know, we, we don't have a minor league system, so guys like Austin Corbett are just considered busts because they didn't work out where Cleveland doesn't win anything. When has Cleveland won anything? So Austin Corbett comes in, a guy that's feisty. He's got a mean streak. I tweeted about it on the Downtown Rams Twitter. If you like Kyle Turley, if you miss Kyle Turley, if you, you liked Richie Incognito at the Rams, if you liked that extra little bit of just anger and, like, that mean streak it, it, like that Harvey Dahl had, you're going to like Austin Corbett. He instantly, in my opinion, is the second most talented offensive lineman on that line right off the bat besides Whitworth. I love it. I, I, you know, and the potential's there. And, and now you're talking, you know, Aaron Cromer. If anybody can fix Austin Corbett, and I don't believe he needs to be fixed, I think, you know, just the, the whole lack of practicing, right? I mean, you don't get much of a chance to really develop these offensive linemen. You don't get enough time around them. And in my opinion, he's going to be fine with just regular, you know, 
just some regular practicing and developing over the course of the next two years if he stays with Cleveland. But now that he's with the Rams, I think he has better coaching. I think he has more of an opportunity. And I think this is huge for not only him, this is a huge career trajectory for him, uh, but it also changes the Rams because now this is like drafting a second-round pick in my mind. You know, I mean, he was a borderline first-round pick. And I think this is exactly how you have to look at it. You basically drafted another second first round pick, and now you have to develop him. And I'm super excited to watch it. Yeah, me too. I think that, you know, (laughs) it's just we've been talking about this O-line for how long, Jake? Like, week one of preseason, (laughs) right? It's becoming uh, like just a meme in itself, right? (laughs) It's becoming redundant, and people hate us because we – keep screaming about it but I think now people are coming around listen we needed to get somebody on that offensive line I know people wanted Trent Williams I know some people still think we're getting Trent Williams I don't think we are Um, I'd be very shocked at this point because considering what we've already given up for Jalen Ramsey I don't think the Redskins are going to take any less than you know a first round pick so I don't think we're going to get Trent Williams I I like this pick I think he will do a decent job listen right now we aren't looking for a superstar offensive lineman we are not that's not what we're even asking for we're asking just for a guy who can get in there and play and hold his own and be decent we're going to get that and probably more in Austin Corbett so I do like this pick I, I'm glad that the Rams listen to the fans and, and you know I'm sure that they also were aware obviously that the offensive line is not performing so they went out they did what they needed to do I like that last guy uh Jake is uh Kenny Young the linebacker from the Ravens he's a guy who again I didn't really know super much about um but he is a young firecracker just from what I've seen and what I've looked up on him I like it I think he's exactly the kind of guy that the Rams like I think he's developmental um I think he's got a lot of potential um he's got a lot of talent and again they addressed the linebacking situation, was an, which was another area that we are struggling with. Uh, so what did you think about uh, the Kenny Young pick, Jake? Well, yeah, like I said earlier, I, I think Kenny Young is somebody that's legitimately going to start, you know, as soon as he can. I mean, I, I think the, the Ravens were quick to pull the trigger on him. You remember, it wasn't long ago, guys, where the Ravens made a move to allow Jimmy Smith to come back on the roster. I forget if he was injured or if he was suspended. I think it was suspended. And they let go of Darius Williams. Um, That same Darius Williams was claimed by the Rams after they attempted to bring him onto the practice squad. So the Ravens have not really, you know, they have shown in the past they're not afraid to cut guys. They did cut, um, and now I forget his name, the guy from Alabama, the pass rusher. (laughs) Now I totally forgot his name. Uh but they they cut the um the pass rusher they drafted in like the third round um out of Alabama um whose name escapes me for whatever reason. Feel free to chime in at any point Alexis, but um but I can't remember his name. Uh Tim Williams, there we go. So yeah, they cut Tim Williams. And it kind of goes to show you like they have no issue cutting these younger guys. Um also, you know, furthermore, um, you know, Ozzie Newsome is no longer the guy there. It's it's Eric DaCosta, I believe. So, um, you know, it's kind of the same thing. Like DaCosta was still in the building when Ozzie Newsome was, you know, in charge. But it's still, you know, it's a little different. Like you want your own guys and you're more you're more reluctant to get rid of guys that are your guys, right? So they have shown in the past, like they've already gotten rid of one of the Newsome guys um, with Tim Williams. They get rid of Kenny Young here. But here's the thing. every like I've seen Ravens fans commenting all over the Rams stuff and, and saying how he's not very good and all that. Um, but you know what? I'll say this. Um, he was not going to get cut. He was traded for a top 20 cornerback in the NFL. Like, let's not act like he's bad, okay? Uh, he's also 23 years old. So the Rams got younger which is crazy because Marcus Peters was already young. So the Rams get younger uh, today, and it was just – it was really a statement. I think if if anything else, it was a statement to the fans. You guys thought, you know, we were going somewhere. We're not going anywhere. If the Rams win out, they go 13-3 and and win the division, right? Like, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I'm saying this season's not over. And I think, you know, people are really changing their tone after today. So it was a tone setter for the fans – 
but I think it was a tone setter for the NFL. Like, hey, we're here. Okay, we didn't go anywhere. We're the, you know, we're still the best team in the AFC. We're still, you know, on a mission to get back to the Super Bowl and win. And there's not going to be a hangover. But I also want to bring up something interesting, Alexis, because it's actually this season has kind of taught us. And granted, they haven't won anything since they made these trades. They haven't played a game since they made these trades. But if anything, this season has shown us how hard it is and why it's so easy to say Super Bowl hangover. It's really hard with all that pressure to get back after you lose the big game. And so it almost seems like the Rams... You know, they were kind of going in that direction, right, where it looked a little disappointing. It looked like they might um, be, you know, falling to not, they were never going to miss, miss the playoffs, in my opinion, uh, barring like a serious injury or anything like that. But, um, you know, it kind of seemed like they were kind of falling towards that wild card, like the lower wild card, like maybe a 10, 11 win team. And, you know, going to put themselves in harm's way and have to win on the road the whole way. And, you know. The thing I think is so important about what they did is they're not doing the same thing that all the other teams that had the quote unquote super Super Bowl hangover uh, were doing. They didn't change anything, right? The Rams they go through they they go three and three their first six games and they clean house in in, in the sense where Marcus Peters is their starting cornerback. He literally makes he 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 brings down an interception in the last game. The defense was not at fault. Like we talked about this. I was big on the defensive play. I thought they played well. Um it wasn't even a defensive thing. So it goes to show you it wasn't even like disciplinary. It was just they really they they wanted to, you know, do something that would help long term. But they also, I think, got better because Jalen Ramsey is better than Marcus Peters. I think Kenny Young is better than Troy Reeder. And I think Austin Corbett is better than uh, Blythe. I think he's better than Brian Allen, even if you play him at center. And I think he's better than Jameel Demby right now, who had a single-digit PFF grade. And I, I cannot even believe that that even happened. But it just goes to show you, though. The Rams spent this time, instead of panicking, instead of doing the things like you said, I don't want to hear the same thing over and over again. I want them to actually, you know, have results. I don't want them to say, oh, we're going to, you know, we're going to get better and we're going to bounce back. The Rams bounced back and, and they did it in a way without playing. They went out and they're like, all right, this is different. You know, we realize there's an issue and we are addressing it. And, you know, being dealt a bad deck of cards with the Gurley injury and the Akib Tlaib injury and the John Johnson injury and Joseph Noteboom, I think they've bounced back pretty well. And I don't think they're done either, Alexis. I think, you know, you and I have talked about it multiple times on this show, you know, Trent Williams. I think Trent Williams is very much alive uh, as far as in the plans. And I think Leonard Williams uh, from the Jets is also somebody that they are, um, you know, considering uh, going after as well. So I think those are two names you have to keep an eye on as we get close to the trade deadline. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, like, like we said, today was a big day. The trade deadline, I believe is October 29th. So there's still plenty of time uh, for the Rams to wheel and deal uh, and to make some, uh, you know, trades. So that is something that we will be on the lookout for, for sure. Um, but before we uh, end this, Jake, I need to point out something that happened on Twitter today. Um, so, so today, so guys, there's been a running joke that all the teams that I've been cheering for in the past month have, have gone from good to bad, right? Uh, the Rams started off hot. Uh, then they lost three in a row. My Cardinals were on my St. Louis Cardinals were on a roll. They were on a tear through, uh, the league. They made the playoffs and now they're about to get swept in the, uh, uh, NLCS. So, it's kind of been a thing like, you know, Alexis, why your teens is doing this, whatever. So I had a, I jokingly today, um, my, uh, someone that I know, uh, was a Falcons fan as a child and they had a Falcons hoodie that I took from them. I did not go out and buy a Falcons hoodie to make a point. I put on the Falcons hoodie. I made a funny video on Twitter, basically talking about how I don't understand how all the teams that I rep and I wear in my shirts or my hoodies or whatever, um, have you know all the teams that i rep essentially have gone bad right and i slowly pan out the camera to see that i'm wearing a falcons fan if you miss the joke and the joke was the fact that because i'm wearing the falcons hoodie they're gonna lose on sunday i don't know what to tell you because 90 percent of people understood the joke they thought it was really funny they shared it on twitter but there's 10 percent group of rams fans 
who thought I was being a fake fan and thought I was jumping ship to the Falcons and just completely missed the joke. So if you were one of those people, it was a joke. Go rewatch the video with this in mind about, you know, the fact that because I'm wearing the Falcons hoodie, um, the Falcons are going to lose. If you didn't get it the first time, please try and get it the second time. If you don't get it, then okay. My joke just wasn't funny, but that's, that's (laughs) what was the point of the video. I think most people got it. I think most people thought it was funny. I just wanted to clear that up because, of course, um, you know. I, I don't but, you know. know. It, I, it is. I, I don't it's know how people get it. But, <laughs> but, yeah, so just I, I'm wearing the Falcons hoodie right now because, no, I'm not superstitious, but I'm going to be superstitious this week, and uh, maybe I'll wear it and, and see if it really is me. And if that's the case, I'll just go out and buy T-shirts for every single one of the Rams' opponents the rest of the year, and I'll wear them for the week that the Rams are playing them. I'll do what I got to do. Um yeah, so that was the point of the video. Um, hopefully uh, you did see it and you did think that it was funny. It is on my Twitter, at the Alexis Craft, if you want to go view the video um, and, you know, take a look at, you know, what I'm ranting about. But just wanted, before we sign off, I just wanted to say that because I thought it was important to clarify. Yeah, no, I, I think it's it's funny. I mean, I, I think I told at at some point I responded to somebody, I'm like, you know, I explained it because it's just, again, it's like, it's our humor. That's like, you know, people got it. It was funny. Um, but then, you know, I had to explain it to someone and I, the way I described it was, it's like, um, you know, opening up a frog, like dissecting a frog, right? Because once you, you know, now you know how the frog works, but you, you can't bring it back to life. It's now dead. <laughs> so with the joke, when I explain it to you, you now know the joke, but the joke has been killed and it's never coming back. Um, so that's kind of the, the bummer about that. And you even had some, I don't know if they were death threats or whatnot, but you had some crazies, uh, in, in our DMs on downtown Rams Instagram. Yeah. I had a lot of people who were very not kind with their words for me. Um, and those people were blocked. So just here's a heads up. If you ever message me a death threat on Instagram, you're going to get blocked. I think that's Um, warranted. That's warranted. So just giving you a heads up. Hey, keep in mind we're talking about football here. Like <laughs> like at the end of the day, like this is this is about a game. This is about football. This is about a team. Like if you ever find yourself getting that pissed off to the point where you literally like I saw Alexis, did you see someone posted the a head official of the Packers and Lions game? They posted his address on Twitter. What is Cleet Blakeman supposed to do? Like what do you do? If someone posts your address on the internet, like, what do you even do with that? You hire security. I don't know. Do you, I don't know what do you I would stay do. Stay in a hotel for you know. Yeah, probably. A, but you're I a would... referee, so you know something is going to come up again, and people are going to keep retweeting that. It's already been bookmarked. <laughs> like... I'd call the. Well, usually in situations like that, you actually can call the police, and if there is a valid threat, they will stay outside your house. I actually do know that. So if I were that referee, I would get the police involved and they would put somebody um, outside of his house, I'm assuming, if, if he chooses to go that way and nothing hopefully will happen to him. Nothing should happen to him. Come on, guys. I mean, I get being impassioned about sports, but this is somebody's life that you're messing with. And I just I think most people are better, you know, than that. So, yeah, uh, I mean, you would hope Uh <laughs> But, uh, you know, before we sign off real quick, uh, you know, just kind of looking at the Falcons game, we haven't really, we haven't, we're not doing our preview yet, guys. Um, you know, we, we decided to really dive into this trade, these trades, because they're huge. Um, and it changes, you know, just the trajectory of this team. But, you know, I want to start with you, Alexis, and I'll give my thoughts. What are you looking at in this game? You know, I think Ramsey is going to suit up. He is going to start. It sounds to me like that's the case. Uh, I don't know if they'll start Corbett right away at offensive guard, um, but they should definitely consider it. And I think Kenny Young is 100% going to start. If not, he'll you know he'll play uh, a decent amount of snaps. Um, they made this trade before Wednesday so they could get these guys in the building in practice. That was the the whole point. But what what are your thoughts on this upcoming week and how you know the Rams look moving into Atlanta? I think that um, 
Ramsey will start and Young will probably start. I think most likely they'll have Corbett um, on the sideline and maybe rotate him in for a few plays. I think that that's a position that that they might want to, you know, hold, you know, maybe not use him as much as they would maybe a Jalen Ramsey, who's kind of more of an immediate need. Uh, Well, I mean, the offensive line's an immediate need, don't get me wrong, but usually with guys like that, they want to wait on a game to kind of get them acquainted more with the playbook and things like that. Um, And then Kenny Young, I could see them either starting or just rotating in. I'm not, I'm not sure what they're going to do. Yeah, I've already heard that, you know, Marquis Christian, it sounds like he's going to be the one to go um, at safety, surprisingly, over Taylor Rapp if John Johnson's out, which hopefully that second opinion comes out good. Um, Yeah, I'm looking at the same thing. I I think Ramsey's a no-brainer, and it's funny because I think people were jumping up and down um, in Atlanta when they saw that Tlaib was on IR and Peters got traded, but you had to suspect something was coming, and, you know, sure enough, the Rams... They kept us in a little bit of suspense. They waited, you know, a few hours after, and then they, you know, pulled the trigger on that trade for Ramsey. But, you know, I, I think Kenny Young is, is either going to split time or he will start um, because I think they've shown in the past that they can do that. Some guys are just that talented. And uh, and Corbett, for me, offensive lines are a little trickier to just kind of plug and play um, without any knowledge of the scheme or anything like that. So I think Corbett is somebody that might take, you know, maybe they'll wait until the bye to fully unleash him. Um, but it's good to have him, you know, in that building. He's practicing. He's going to, you know, be coached by guys like Cromer. I think that's going to be huge for him. And, you know, it, it's all in all, I mean, Alexis, they've done a nice job of grabbing, you know, the, again, the, these draft picks. You know, you talk about Kenny Young. You talk about Corbett. Uh, Ja'Kai Polite, you know, we didn't really mention a ton about him on the pod, but he's on the practice squad and he was a third round pick that obviously, you know, I loved. Uh, so, I mean, they have, you know, people keep, they keep trading away their, their picks, but they're getting them back, you know, in, in different ways. <laughs> they, they have the Jaguars. Was it their 14 through 16 picks in, uh, Bortles, Fowler and Ramsey? Their, their right. first round picks. I mean, that's insane. But, um, yeah, that's that's about that's about all I have. Uh, you know, we're we're gonna dive more deeper into this game. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to the game. Really looking forward to seeing Ramsey, Young, and Corbett out in action. It just seems, you know, like the panic button is really far away now after they made these moves, and um, it just seems like a different type of uh, situation we're going into. But you know, with that being said, uh, for Jake Ellenberg and she's Alexis Kraft. This has been uh, your Downtown Rams live podcast, which we haven't done in months. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, Special edition, of course, anytime you have three trades like that go down or two trades like that go down, uh, it's a must. So hope you guys enjoyed. Again, uh, we'll be back. We got some uh, fun stuff planned for the end of the week. Uh, So definitely keep it right here for all your Downtown Rams and uh, Rams content. Thanks, guys. Later.